There's an unspoken rule about trailers that you should only show clips from the first or second acts of the movie. So whenever I'm in a theater and I haven't seen a clip that was in the trailer yet, I'm thinking, oh, so they didn't have much to show for the first two acts. And that's pretty much how I felt with Godzilla x Kong. And before you come at me in the comments saying I just hate fun because I know that's gonna happen, I liked Godzilla vs Kong and Skull Island. I gave them both about a 7. So it's not like I just have an agenda against the Monsterverse or something. So with that, here's my review of Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Let me start with what I liked, because I did like parts of this movie. What they do with Kong is genuinely kind of clever, because they actually try to make him a character. They give him an adopted son, they sort of give him goals, and there's an argument to be made that Kong is the protagonist of this movie. The scenes that just let Kong do his thing and be a character were the best parts of this movie, bar none. That's about all I liked, though. I did like the score, it was interesting to see Godzilla and Kong and even Mothra have light motifs, but other than that I was pretty negative about this film. This almost goes without saying at this point, but the human characters in this are, as I recall, the worst they've ever been. I genuinely continue to wonder if these Monsterverse movies could function without them, because I would watch a whole movie solely about what Kong had going on like I talked about earlier. The human characters stumble into random situation after random situation, and the attempts to humanize them fall completely flat. At least in Godzilla vs. Kong, they had actual goals. Here, they're just being told where to go by the plot. This all goes without mentioning the psychic child beat that comes completely out of nowhere. This is such a departure from where this universe started, and even the last movie, that it feels like a completely separate world. Gia and Dr. Andrews are the only characters they even make an attempt to give any traits to in this movie, and that amounts to a very surface level mother and daughter dynamic. Bernie exists solely to pump out a few jokes, Trapper very quickly falls into archetype territory. Even the Iwi are just an amalgam of ridiculous ideas cooked up by someone over at Legendary. This goes so far to the point where the movie just ignores them for minutes upon minutes at a time. They have next to no hand in the finale. To anyone that's going to inevitably say in the comments, these movies are about the monsters, not the humans. At that point, why even have the humans in the movie at all? You don't really care for them. Obviously, I hate them. If the focus is the monsters, why even include the garbage human characters in the first place? And it's not like good human characters and fun monster fights can't coexist. Like, it's been done time and time again. We know for a fact they can. It's just an excuse some people use to justify bad writing. Even Godzilla vs. Kong, like I said, gave them goals and made them slightly more than one-dimensional. This movie just doesn't even try. Godzilla's side of the plot is equally underwhelming. Obviously, he had to be in this movie, so the writers had to find random excuses to keep him around. Most of what he's given to do in this movie are just random fights that have little to no bearing on the actual plot. All of this really affects the pacing, too. Whenever the human characters or Godzilla show up during the first two acts, the movie becomes a slog. It lends to a very jumpy feel of highs when Kong comes back and low lows during the other segments. How you can make a big lizard fighting some water creature boring is beyond me. Maybe Maybe make it have basically no effect on the story, I guess. Also, I know I keep using the word random to describe things, but that's really the best word for this movie. A lot of this feels like the writers were just throwing things at the wall to see what stuck, and then just kept everything anyway. It's a lot of attempts at, wow, look at this, look at that. A great example of this is that Mothra comes completely out of nowhere after having died in King of the Monsters. Apparently, she laid an egg in the post credit scene of King of the Monsters, which, fair enough, I guess. I didn't know that scene existed because I watched the film at home a couple of years after it came out. But without any proper setup in this movie, she, or I guess her child, just appears, like almost completely out of thin air. Additionally, I don't know what happened to the CGI between Godzilla vs. Kong and this, but it was a huge downgrade. The monsters aren't grounded in the scenes they're in. Garrido Rankings reviews on Instagram described it as weightless, and I think that's the perfect word for it. It doesn't help that there's so much destruction happening in the third act that a lot of the visuals just become muddy. Even the action isn't all that fun. I really enjoyed the fights between Kong and the other apes, don't get me wrong, but by the end of the movie, it's like a kid playing with action figures. The fights between Kong and the apes have weight to them, their punches have power behind them, you can feel it. The finale, though, it didn't really have that. Also, are Shimo and the Scar King really the best villains Legendary could cook up? I feel like they could get so much more creative with it, or even bring back some old ones from the other movies that haven't shown up in a while. The evil orangutan is decent for Kong, but all that build up for Ice Godzilla, really? There is some fun to be had with the finale, though. It's not all bad. Some of the action beats are exciting. It's just not even remotely close to the best this universe has ever seen. 
Put simply, it's just not all that well constructed. Another thing about the whole team up aspect of this movie is that Godzilla and Kong barely team up. They fight for some reason and then join up for the finale and that's about it. I feel like there's way more that could have been done with that. I guess this is another thing that goes without mentioning, but the acting is pretty bad. Rebecca Hall doesn't even try, and Brian Tyree Henry does the best with what he's given, but none of it comes out good. Alex Burns as Mikhail completely throws in the towel, whose character is also completely forgettable. At the end of the day, I'm just baffled at how we got here. Like, how we got from Godzilla stomping around destroying a city to ancient tribes that talk to each other through their thoughts is completely beyond me. There are other things to mention about how absurd this has gotten as a universe, like the existence of Titan insurance and Godzilla just sleeping in the Roman Colosseum. Like, I think they're just leaning way too far into it and it's making this series more and more goofy. And it's not really that I have an issue with this taking on a more lighthearted tone, that's not my problem. I mean, the tone is way less serious than Godzilla 2014, don't get me wrong. It's the fact that the writers have also gotten to the point where they're not taking anything seriously either. Like I said before, it just feels like they don't care whatsoever and they're just throwing anything out there. And I think that is 100% to this movie and this universe's detriment. Because if the writers don't care about what they're writing, then why should you care about what they're writing? Like yeah, watching big monkeys and big lizards fight is cool and all, but it's just gotten to the point where it's completely ludicrous and not in a good way at all. Basically, my point is, this is not a tone the writers are shooting for, they just don't care. So with that, my final score for Godzilla x Kong is going to be a 4.3 out of 10. That puts it above King of the Monsters for me, but below everything else in the MonsterVerse. This one didn't do it for me. I'd love to hear your thoughts though. If anyone has a well thought out argument in this movie's favor, I genuinely want to hear it. Please leave a comment. But that's all I have for now. Let me know if you like this format of review because if so, I'll keep doing it for new movies. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.